Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Jennifer Gardy, Deputy Director for Surveillance, Data, and Epidemiology on the malaria team at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And it is a pleasure and a privilege to share some of my thoughts with you at this virtual gathering. Time zones, of course, preclude me from joining you live in person, but I do hope that these recorded remarks leave you with an important message, namely that now is the time to preserve and strengthen essential malaria services and and that success in eliminating malaria in Asia is a vital and catalytic step on our journey to eradicating malaria worldwide. Now, there's no doubt that the COVID-19 pandemic is currently the top global health priority for countries around the world. But at the same time, we need to maintain our commitment to fighting diseases that claim hundreds of thousands of lives each year, diseases like malaria. Our gains in malaria have been precious, but those gains are also precarious. The slightest lapse in our resolve, the smallest stutter in our response could reverse decades of hard-won progress. Worldwide, health systems truly are struggling to cope with the added burden of COVID-19. And while each and every country faces unique challenges in responding to this crisis, malaria endemic countries, particularly those in sub-Saharan Africa, are in an especially dangerous situation. Past health emergencies have shown that when already fragile health systems are disrupted, endemic diseases will surge. During and after the 2014 Ebola outbreak in West Africa, for example, malaria, TB, and HIV AIDS ultimately contributed to many more deaths than the Ebola virus itself. We fear the same situation may be unfolding now in the case of COVID-19, only this time over a much larger scale. In countries where health systems lack resources and are already overburdened responding to other infectious threats, disruptions to health services and campaigns will have devastating effects. A recent modeling analysis from the World Health Organization and partners found that if essential malaria prevention and treatment services are severely disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, things like bed net distribution and access to anti-malarials, malaria deaths in sub-Saharan Africa could could double compared to 2018, a return to mortality levels that we haven't seen for two decades. The good news is that countries, multilateral agencies, and partners have taken action to avoid the worst outcomes predicted by the models by prioritizing net distribution campaigns, IRS spraying, and clarifying treatment-seeking guidance, particularly in high transmission regions. We are on a trajectory that will avert that major step backwards in pro progress. But just as COVID-19 will continue for the foreseeable future, so too do these actions need to continue. We, as the global malaria community, must stand together to ensure that essential services and commodities are available to all who need them during the pandemic. This is a global story, but this is also an Asian story. Reducing the burden of malaria across Asia is critical to maintaining global progress against this disease. And although Asian countries have been doing an exceptional job of managing the COVID-19 pandemic, it is imperative that you remain vigilant against the threat of the virus and its potential to jeopardize your region's progress in fighting malaria. Robust political will and widespread uptake of bed nets, anti-malarial medicines, and rapid diagnostic tests have helped to cut deaths from malaria by more than half since the year 2000. The committed leadership of countries in Asia has been central to this progress, which is truly one of public health's greatest success stories. In 2018, China and Malaysia reported zero indigenous cases of malaria, putting elimination within reach. But if COVID-19 disrupts the essential malaria services that have made this possible, these historic gains could be undone. The greater Mekong subregion has long been on the front lines of the fight against emerging drug resistance, but without urgent action, COVID-19 threatens to disrupt vital projects focused on monitoring and responding to resistance. Without this work, multidrug malaria could spread, costing lives and resulting in lost ground in this global fight. 
The COVID-19 pandemic underscores why eliminating malaria is so essential. The world's poorest and most vulnerable communities face a double burden with the combined impact of endemic diseases like malaria and emergent threats like COVID-19 stretching health systems to their limits. And even in countries with relatively small malaria case counts, the disease will always have the potential to resurge in times of crisis like the pandemic facing us now. History has shown that we can't be complacent when it comes to infectious diseases. With each advance we've made against malaria, the parasites and the vectors fight back, evolving resistance to our most effective drugs and insecticides, rendering cutting edge tools ineffective, requiring further investment, and ultimately resulting in more lives lost. That is why we can't be satisfied until the job is done. We need to stay focused on elimination and Asia can lead the way. Ridding the world of preventable, treatable diseases like malaria will lead to healthier, more prosperous communities that are better positioned to confront new health challenges like COVID-19 as they arise. Thanks to impactful partnerships and initiatives like M2030 and the contributions of partners and individuals from every sector, we are one step closer to a malaria-free world. The fight against malaria is too big and too complex for any one organization, sector, or field to solve, particularly in the face of new challenges like COVID-19. Eradicating malaria for good will require investment and input from individuals and organizations at every level, and they can't go it alone. Partnerships are critical because they enable every organization to contribute the resources necessary to fill financial and technical gaps and to position countries to make that oh-so-important final push towards elimination and ultimately a world free of malaria. Thank you.